On the eastern shore of Nova Scotia, Highway 7 winds its way along an ocean front of many moods. It's a marine highway, 129 miles long. From Dartmouth to Sherbrooke, following the bays and inlets, it skirts the Atlantic all the way. Fishing villages and small farming communities take the place of cities and towns along this highway. And the rhythm of the sea has marked each one with a distinctive pattern of life or industry. One entrance to this marine highway is through Dartmouth, across the harbor from Halifax. Until 1955, only a ferry service linked Halifax with this old town. With the opening of the Angus L. MacDonald Bridge, business and construction surged ahead in Dartmouth. Today, it's a city, and another bridge is to help serve the growing needs of the area. The oil refineries. the Marine Slip, the CNR Terminal Point, the floating labs of the Institute of Oceanography with headquarters at Bedford Basin, an institution that serves all Canada in the field of marine research and hydrography, and Canada's main naval air station at Shearwater, These and the many industries now being drawn to the area are pushing the growth of this new industrial city. Dartmouth has spread beyond its original setting on the slope facing the harbor and now surrounds the chain of 23 lakes which once flanked it. Atop the hill, with the great city pulsing all around it, an 18-hole course is like an island refuge for golfers. Regattas occur often on Lake Banuk, but on Dartmouth's natal day, there's the grandest one of all. Dartmouth, famed for its canoe racing champions, is the hub of competitive paddling. Beyond the city, the bays and inlets invite all kinds of water sports.
Many of the stopping places along the way are found near rivers and streams. These are the runways of salmon and sea trout. As silver bright from the sea, they head for the upper reaches, their spawning grounds. Liscum, St. Mary's, Ecom Secum, Musquodabit, and Tangier rivers are some of their favorite haunts. The annual sportsman show at Stillwater is everybody's show. Amateur or pro, resident or non-resident, may pit his skill against another's. Things that children can do on a seafront of many miles are limited only by their imagination. On little ponds and backwaters, Tom Sawyers and Huck Finns are legion. A pond becomes an ocean, a raft leads to high adventure. Dr. Helen Creighton is noted for her collection of folk songs. Among these songs are legends of this very shore, stories of romance and tragedy, of storms at sea, of happenings generations old, but still remembered. A young fisherman from Rocky islands offshore make very real some of the legends that stem perhaps from the days of pirates and buried treasure. These lonely outposts of the shoreline are the sanctuaries of seabirds. Even their names are suggestive, duck, gull, and egg island. When taken over completely by cormorants, the islands lose their greenery.
such lonely islands have a fascination of their own. The urge to portray the varying moods of the sea has always drawn artists to the province. An ordinary fishing cove is picturesque. Drab fish sheds are glamorous to the artist who sees beyond their homely use and gives them dignity. The marine highway is an open road to adventure, to the pleasures of the outdoor, where new places will become familiar and new acquaintances, old friends. Farewell to Nova Scotia, the sea-bound coast. Let your mom 